thank you for the kind introduction and for putting this together today. I'll just uh, very briefly, because you've got some very important and informed people to hear from, uh, our Energy Environment uh, Subcommittees had a number of hearings on related topics to this. And as many of you know, buildings consume 40% of uh, the energy in this country. And there are a combination of basically two factors that go into that consumption. One, the structure itself, the physical envelope that you inhabit, but two, the operator characteristics. And as we've looked at this, the question arises, how can we improve that energy efficiency? I'm gonna just very briefly suggest uh, two ways that I think would be uh, transformative. First, my own belief is that information about the total utility cost for a given year should be mandatorily, or at least voluntarily, I believe mandatory, uh, uh, listed on MLS listings uh, or real estate listings. The premise would be that when you shop for a house, you can look online or on any other listing and see the full listing for all the utilities, water, gas, electric, etc. Two reasons for that. One, if you're a homeowner today and the question is, shall I make the investment in fill in the blank energy efficient product? New windows, uh, uh, the more efficient uh, uh, heater or air conditioning, etc., etc., better lighting, blah, blah, blah. Fill in the blank. The question is, how can you demonstrate the return on investment to potential buyers? Today, what happens is you look online and you see, and I'm in this process, you look online and you see uh, baseboard heat or forced air, uh, forced air air conditioning. You don't know what that means in terms of the net return on investment. If you may have some vague idea, but if you're comparison shopping, you don't have a way to say, that two otherwise identical houses, the one with the lower utility bill is your better buy, and you ought to have a way to do that. You can, you, any dealer in America, car dealer, you can walk in and the first thing you see on the, on the passenger or the driver's side window is what? Big, it's this big, by law it's a certain size. The mileage of the car. You can't get that information readily about houses. Now rather sadly, some very influential groups, notably the realtors who are friends of mine and, and have supported me in the past, and I support them in many ways, have opposed this and I think their, their logic is poor. Their logic is that this will discriminate against old houses. Quite the contrary. Two old houses, same floor uh, era of construction, same flo uh, floor size. If you have the information about the u utility costs, you have a more informed buyer. In fact, the job of a realtor is to help people discriminate. Not against things, but for things, to make wise and informed decisions. So issue number one would be listing. The set related to this, so if one is to put the physical, tangible assets in to re, re, uh, uh, improve your energy efficiency, the other is there's a behavioral incentive to listing your utility costs, because now, if you're ever going to sell your house, which most, 40 million Americans move every year, by the way. Now, a lot of it's apartments, but much of that is home sales. Now you have a behavioral incentive, because if you're, you're now in competition with the guy down the street who's trying to sell his house. If you try to buy, if when you get a mortgage, the lender has to tell you this is the net cost of the loan over time. You have to tell you principal, uh, interest, insurance, etc. That's all part of buying a house. It ought, to be op it ought to be operating costs as well, and there ought to be an incentive for you to lower those operating costs, both by the tangible, and tangible investments and by your behavior. So for those reasons, tangible investments and motives for behavior change, we ought to list all utility costs uh, as part of uh, uh, sales information before, before the sales close. Second major suggestion that has come from our hearings and, and our discussion. The very best time to retrofit a home or a business is at point of sale. It's a point of sale for two reasons. One, the place is gonna be empty. When we put renew, uh, uh, double pane low E windows in our home, the guys had to open up this great huge space on the third floor uh, window with two two-year-olds running around. <laughs> it was not the safest or easiest environment. Get us out of there before the new owners come in, that's when you do the big operation. First, because it's vacant and it's easier to do construction work when nobody's in the house. But secondly, you've got the capital at the time. You've got the capital. If you're borrowing $200,000 and you want to add $20,000 for a new heating system, relative to the $200,000, the $20,000 is not a fast increase. But from scratch, 
to go out and borrow two hundred or twenty thousand dollars more is a problem. It's you know you can maybe or maybe not afford it, but it takes extra time. You're going to pay a higher interest rate, etc., etc., etc. We need to find ways to do that. I would suggest that both of these proposals we can leverage FA, FHA and VA loans to encourage that FHA loans require that you list the full operating costs and the VA loans require full operating costs be listed. If, you're to, if you want to be listed and be eligible for those uh, loan, loan fund, funds. And second, that there be some incentive, some tax or other incentive that, that gives people an extra bonus for making those investments in uh, energy efficiency at the time of purchase. Two simple suggestions, they would have a profound impact and with as many people turning over homes as, as do every year, the cumulative effect would be very, very rapid. And, uh, and I think, by the way, it's much more elegant. Both of those solutions are more elegant. I'm not necessarily opposed to a, an Energy Star-like rating system, but I think this is a more elegant solution. The most uh, immediate rating system you've got is how much does it cost, and you don't have to have a bunch of abstract uh, uh, formulas for that. Thank you very much for letting me join you. Enjoy the conference today, and uh, this is an absolutely worthwhile and essential cause for the sake of the home you see behind us, uh, which is all of our homes.